and Taiwan has been rated as completely open for three consecutive years. Where the only Asian this is a slide used by Taiwan's digital minister at the U.S. Democracy Summit that seems to have ruffled feathers. China and Taiwan in different colors. After her presentation, Minister Audrey Tang's video feed was cut and replaced with a name card over her audio. I'm hoping you can offer just a few more thoughts on where we are. Certainly. So um, I've heard a lot about the digital public infrastructures. The United States, which hosted the summit, put it down to technical difficulties. Taiwan's foreign ministry said the same. Their statement reads, the United States sincerely stated that this was due to a technical problem in the control center, which made the screen sharing function unavailable. Taiwan and the United States have fully communicated on this technical issue, and the two sides have mutual, solid trust and solid and friendly relations. But after Tang's segment at the online summit, there was an on-screen disclaimer that any opinions expressed by individuals on the panel were not necessarily a reflection of the views of the U.S. government. The U.S. adheres to the One China policy and doesn't directly take a stance on the issue of Taiwan sovereignty, which has led many to believe the White House deliberately cut off Tang's video, not wanting to seem at odds with the long-standing policy. I think there are people within the State Department in the U.S. that are very wary of Taiwan. And despite the stronger moves by the Biden administration in support of Taiwan, this has not gone to the way of strategic clarity on Taiwan. It's still officially a position of strategic ambiguity. Biden has made various gaffes in which he has referred to uh, Taiwan, uh, China and the U.S. agreeing on the Taiwan policy, and there is no such policy. Uh, then later on, there were comments that he made which were interpreted as more supportive of Taiwanese independence, but then these were also walked back. The map used in the summit by Tang shows the degree of civic freedoms around the country ranked by an international nonprofit, with Taiwan marked as open and China as closed. Tang did not show the map during the panel dry runs, and it may have caught organizers by surprise. They had barred their use of any overt symbols of Taiwan sovereignty, which Tang has stressed was not what she'd done. Taiwan's foreign ministry did not offer a comment on the disclaimer. So I think uh, what happens then when the U.S. expresses support for Taiwan is that China then hits back regarding this, uh, particularly under the Trump administration and continuing under the Biden administration. You have the pattern of increasing support for Taiwan as a reaction to something that China does, which, uh, of course, raises the accusation then that you're only increasing support for Taiwan as a way to quickly stick it to China. Um, but then China responds with military threats, uh, mostly deploying warplanes to Taiwan's air defense identification zone, uh, some of naval exercises, and the U.S. usually responds in kind. And so you have this pattern of tit-for-tat escalation, and Taiwan is, is caught uncomfortably in between in that, that sense. This comes at a sensitive time for cross-strait relations, where China is ramping up its military posturing and Taiwan is boosting its defense capabilities. Taiwan has asked the U.S. for more overt support. And while it appears the United States is willing to invite Taiwan to the table, it still hesitates to be seen as backing the country. Alex Chen and Bing Wong for Taiwan Plus.